with the um, Freak Out project, which we exhibited I mean, two years ago in Setlag. So it's my second time, and actually, yeah, it's so yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, could you please tell us about your presentation? Um, how did you get the inspiration? And when was the start? And how you started to do these kind of presentations? Uh, you mean, I think, I mean, already in 1992, I started to use sound. You know, instead of making objects, I wanted to sort of uh, work with a material which doesn't take up space, but are still very really physical. Because you know, I was working with sculpture, and uh, to me, like sound is also very sculptural. And um, I think probably it was like 2002 around there where I really decided I need to go outside and. Um, Start making, uh, you know, finding the really uh, the small sounds, the inaudible stuff, you know, the, and underwater recordings I've been doing the last nine years. So it's begun quite some time now. But the first field recording, sort of, or if you should call it field recording, outside recording, were in, in London, of the Thames, actually, when I studied in the Cosmos. Oh, I did. What's about the sound? How do you understand the bird like sound? How do you feel about the sound? What 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 role does it mean in your life? Okay, yeah, it's sound of course has a quite pretty large part of my life. Um, well I think it's sort of um, <laughs> it's um, yeah, I would say you know always been important, you know, from early age on. Uh, music, of course, uh, from uh, you know, I was a child and remembering my mother playing saxophone and I was asleep, you know, in my head, you know, this kind of thing. Of course, those sounds are always, the sound is all around us all the time, you know, even before you're born, you hear sound in the inside of the, your mother's belly, you know, so. Um, I think as for everybody, sound is a very important thing, very often uh, not considered, uh, maybe enough, unconsciously enough. So, um, very often I think it's focused listening and, and being kind of in control of your sound environment so that you know, yeah, not can't see this. Uh, yeah. Okay, that, this is okay. Uh, uh, do you have any expectations, or what do you expect from uh, from people after they hear your uh, like sound presentation, sound installation? Do you have any like thoughts about what should people think over after that or during yeah. that? Well, I think uh, for people, for me, there is a very clear story when I'm composing or I was like putting it together, layers and layers, and you know, how, oh no, that should be. Uh, I'm always thinking of a story. And I don't expect people to have the same story as I have, you know, because I mean, sound, it can also be very open and I like that. And I want to keep it pretty open. The performance I did uh, today is probably the more sort of recognizable sounds that you can pick out more, more than usual. Uh, often I have sounds that people haven't heard before, which is uh, fish, which uh, I never had heard fish before. Uh, what kind of sounds do you usually like hear, and what kind of sounds do you use in your like installations? Yeah, I think what I'm most interested in is the sound that we are not hearing in our daily life, but are still there. We just don't notice them. They might be outside a range of uh, you know too high frequencies or. Uh, at places where we can't really access our ears on the water, it's not so easy for us to listen because we have air inside our ears. So our ears are not very well adapted to listening on the water. Even though you know our skulls and bone structure can trans, you know, can hear also. You know, so, but anyway, um, what was the question? <laughs> About the sounds, the, what kind of sounds do you, do you use? I mean, well, I use, yeah. But it also depends, you know, it could be that I hear, like in this performance here also, there was quite a lot of motor sounds. I mean, there was sounds from a research ship in the Barents Sea that I was on in 2007. And they was right in this area, north of Chitkanes, you know, and north of the Pacific Dome. So it depends, you know, I always record also above water 
when I'm at the site. But I don't carry my recorder everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. So I, I go out for a recording session because I have a specific thing I want to record. But I always end up with something else than I planned to record. So that's... Uh, yeah. And then it's like endless books uh, logging and logging and all the sounds as soon as I get in. And then, um, you know, I might go back 10 years and find, remember a sound and say it again. Yeah. And how long does it take for you to, to record the, the, the sounds? Could it be like several hours or it could be like whole day or even whole weeks or? Yeah, um, it depends. You know, some field trips where I'm going to record, you know, it might be like 10 days or, you know, one day, so it depends on the project, uh, and and even just outside in you know in the back garden, I could go out and find something there that I would like to record and come back and come back to the same spot. So I do that kind of it in my neighborhood area in the forest. My also I go back to the same spot and I record different at different times of the of the year. You know, so it varies. Do you have any kind of sound which you surprised, like you're very surprised, which you do not didn't expect that? Yeah. I think when I heard first time I heard sea snails uh, moving on stone, that that had such a kind of large sound uh, that really surprised me because I wasn't thinking that they would, that's a mecha the mechanical sound of them moving. You know, so I was very surprised about. That. And it stays with me. And of course, the underwater insects. Is so you know. The first time I heard it, it's like cricket underwater. It sounds like a cricket, but it's underwater. So all of a sudden I discovered.